back, Stephen. Yes, let's talk about the uh, tour of a nation today. I mean, you're a triple eight poker man there. Jeff Finnick, world boxing champion. David Tour, what do you reckon? What's going to happen? Well, he certainly holds an ace in his left hook. But um, like I said, I, I honestly believe that Shane Cameron has got a great chin. They say he cuts, but look, even if he cut, it's not going to stop Shane Cameron. This is a, a really bad cut. He will fight on. I believe that it's going to be a great fight while it lasts. But I just believe that Shane Cameron has the has the, the mental capacity to, to, to go through this. And like I said, um, I've made comebacks. I know it's hard. It's going to be hard for David. But like I said, David has that one big thing, that, that punch. But I still, I still lean slightly towards Shane Cameron. Colonel Bob, what's at stake here for, for Tour? Because if he wins tonight, he gets the ranking 7 and 14 WBO IBF that Shane Cameron has now. That means it makes it easy to go back to America if he wants to, to try and relive that dream of having another crack at the world title. You know, Brownie, I think everything is on the line for David Tour tonight. There's no tomorrow for David Tour. He must win tonight or his career is virtually over. He can't go back to square one at his age and start over again. He's got to beat this guy and he's got to beat him convincingly because you heard what uh, Mike had to say uh, leading up about that little difference and I like that explanation because that's the unknown difference and in a, in a great fight and this is not only is this a great fight but this event is extraordinary you know I've been privileged to call 876 world title fights and I'm honest and I'm not saying this because I'm in New Zealand I get goosebumps I can't, I can't wait for this thing to happen but it's all or nothing for David Tua tonight he must beat this guy and he he must beat him convincingly and that's what the fight's all about as we saw in the lead-up fight anything can happen with heavyweights and that's the great thing and the exciting thing about the heavyweight division is one punch as we saw in the previous fight can turn the whole thing around so will it be david tour's lethal left hook will it be the lethal body rip of shane the mountain warrior cameron stay with us Booyah. let's bring it on as we bring the fighters to the ring they're just moments away sky thank box you. office back to you steven thank you clinton it's uh, there hasn't been too much trash talk around but one thing that sticks in my mind, Shane Cameron saying, I'm going to punch some respect to him, respect into him, and David Tour coming back and saying, I will make him suffer. Final thoughts, Mike. Final thoughts on this one. Which way for you and when? If it's going to finish early, it'll finish in round two or three, knock out to Cameron. If it goes long, knock out to Tour, rather, if it goes longer than that, David Tour could be in trouble. David, uh, Shane Cameron reckons he can get him in the eight. If it goes that far, do you favour Cameron? Unless he stops him on body shots, I don't see him dropping David Tua. We are on the cusp of boxing history in this little country of ours, New Zealand, outside the door of Team Cameron. Both fighters looking pretty relaxed all week. The weigh-in was one heck of a time, and the promoters were very cool, the fighters were very cool, they did their medicals, they are very relaxed, and the crowd here is now reaching fever pitch. There is such an underlying story of the Samoan tsunami tragedy and the late Sir Howard Morrison. But now it's time to get busy. Here we go, folks. Four years in the making. The fight of the century. Tua and Cameron. It is scheduled for 12 three-minute rounds of heavyweight boxing. It is for the WBO Oriental Heavyweight title and the WBO Asia Regional Heavyweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, would somebody, somewhere, please make some noise! <laughs> Introducing first, Coming from the red gate, ladies and gentlemen, this is David Tua! 
So 
Supervisor is Mr. Pat Leonard. The commissioning authority of commissioners is Mr. Carrick Belton. The timekeeper is Joan Belton. The doctor ringside is Dr. Dave Renata. And when the bell rings, the international referee in charge is Mr. Bruce McTavish from the Philippines. And now, introducing the fighter to my He enters the ring wearing black trunks with white trim. He tipped the scales at a stealth 107.8 kgs. He hails from Samoa and representing South Auckland, New Zealand. He won the bronze medal at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. He is the former number one ranked contender in the WBO, WBC, and IBF. He has knocked out four heavyweight champions. And he's also on the list of the top 50 heaviest punchers in any division of all times. He has 53 professional fights with 49 wins, three losses, and one draw. With 42 big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing.
opponent standing across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with black trim. He took the scales at 103.5 kgs. He hails from Tiniroto, Gisborne, New Zealand. He is currently ranked as one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. Going as high as sixth in his WBO ranking. He also won a bronze medal at the 2002 Commonwealth Games in Jamaica. He has 24 professional fights with 23 wins, one loss, no draws, with 20 big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing... physical condition. The mountain warrior, Shane Cameron, is it his coming out party? Is it the end of the era for David Tour? That's what this fight's all about. It is the fight of the century. Round one, scheduled for 12. The champion decked out in white. The challenger, David Tour, in black trunks. So far, Shane is doing what most people thought. Boxing from the outside. Tour misses his first left hand out. Shane lands his first left hook. Cameron jabs him off again. Catches him on the left hook. David hasn't landed a punch yet. Shane's right hand's a little bit low. He's got to get it up high because the left hook is the weapon for David Tua. We'll look for that. David is very worked up a great sweat, so he's ready to go. But he's a very cool customer here in the early going. He's not... He's not panicking, he's not pushing the fight. There's the left hook on the inside. He's got such a great chin, he's walking up, he's taking the fight to Shane, which we expected. But now he's got to wait and see what happens. There's the first left hook, and it hurt Shane a little. Now, it caught him, and it, it caught his attention. But remember, Shane, when he first started out training in the same camp with David and has sparred with him, he knows this power. Can he hold up against the power? There's the left hand again, which grazes across the eyes of Shane Cameron. Shane faints, throws his left hook, and whistles past the nose of David. Double jab, right hand, sails over the head of David. The Tuminator, they call him now, has the left hand. You know, he's landed the left hook three times. Right hand on the left hook by Joe here in round number one. Shane has already felt the power, and you can see a little wealth coming up by the right eye. Two is very methodical, just throwing good, good, precise punches. He's giving away some four inches in uh, height to this guy. He's four kilograms heavier, but he's at the lightest weight that he's been in years. David Tour has lost some 26 kilo kilograms, so he's in great physical condition for this fight. There is no tomorrow for David Tour. Shane Cameron, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. David faints, shows nice head movement, which makes it hard for Shane to hit him coming in. Shane touches him up a couple of times, and David whistles the left hook by him again. You notice Bruce McTavish stays back. He's one of the very best referees in the world. Oh, he got him. And he got him again. Shane's ready to go. And he's down in round one. Shane's in a heap of trouble. He won't be able to recover from this. He's trying to get up too quick. He comes forward. McTavish will give him all the time in the world. David catches him. It's going to be a first round I don't know about that. It won't be, but I'm just saying he's hitting the ball. He's four and five and six and seven. He's got the eight count. He brings his hands up. He's called timeout. Bruce McTavish is called timeout. And we're at the very end of the round.
first round. So it didn't take long. A lot of the questions have already been answered. The power of Joy is still there, and Shane won't last long with him. He can't recover from those two big shots. That was a knockout. The fight was over. There was no response by Cameron, but this... this that's the first knockdown. The second knockdown, he hit him twice while he was on his knees. Down, look. Oh, that's the first one still. He's look, down. They're hitting big. You see, this second knockdown, he hits him while he's on the floor twice. Look at that. On the floor. On the floor. Yeah, he does. Now, Bruce McTavish called timeout at the very tail end of the round. I don't know why, but he did hit him down twice, and it could have been a disqualification. Cedric Kushner was going wild in the corner, saying the fight was over. This is the David two that we all thought would have come to fight Lennox Lewis. Where was he? Big difference in the skills of Shane and Lennox. Shane's eyes are both puffy. And now let's see if David can keep the pressure on him. He knows what he can do. Shane backing off immediately. He's trying to jab. Gets hit again. Shane is hurt. That shows you David Tua is back. My God, that was devastating. But listen, I've got, I've got look, he's a friend of mine, Bruce McTavish, but I've got to question the referee. He didn't take too many punches there. Too, too many punches. Shane took at least seven or eight clean blows. McTavish, of course, didn't want to stop it too quick, but... You know, I'm, I'm not going to take the judgment away from the referee in this particular case. I don't know what went on with the two punches when he was on his knee. A little bit of controversy in there. But there's no question it was academic. David Tua pummeled this guy and did what he has to do to jump back on the scene. That's a brilliant knockout victory for David Tua. That's devastating. Look, I, like I said, obviously I know Lennox Lewis is different, but if that kind of guy came out against the Lennox Lewis, who knows what could have happened? Uh, he was cool in the easy, uh, early going of the fight. And, I mean, he just really devastated. Here's David over there saying, you know, now this shows the sportsmanship of the two guys. Well, nobody's ever doubted what a gentleman David Tool is. My heart goes out to Shane because I know how hard he worked to get ready for this fight. He's a wonderful guy. Guy raised in the shadows of Mark Fucker for... Naki. The mountain warrior might have been from the mountains, but he wasn't the warrior tonight. It wasn't his night. David Tua's career gets a whole new blast. And now the big talk is, will Tua come back and fight Haseem Rockman for third time here? Ladies and gentlemen, with just seven seconds, Exactly what David Tua needed. Great victory for David Tua. Clint Brown is in there, and this man now becomes a force in the heavyweight division. I think the the Duco guys have shown that they can put on a promotion and they can bring a major heavyweight fight here. I think Hus Asim Rockman would be the next move sometime before Christmas. That's what they're talking about anyway. We'll find out more about that. But David Tua, Jeff Fennick did everything he needed to do. It. Look at this guy's face. Well, definitely. Duco, David Higgins, and the team have done a great job. But like I said, he was absolutely awesome tonight, David Tua. Clint Brown is standing by. He's in the ring, and very shortly we'll have an interview. Let's go to Clint Brown. Clint, go ahead. David, Talofa, it's great to see you back in the ring. The Tour Minator is back. David Tua. Hey, uh. First and foremost, uh, I'd like to uh, 
thank my brother Shane for allowing me and giving me the opportunity to do what I love doing tonight. And obviously, thanking everybody for coming along tonight and support both of us. Thank you. Take us through the fight, the preparation, and what it means to you to win with another big KO like that. It was very important in every way. Uh, I know that I've lost a lot of weight, and I think uh, a lot of people and have said that I've lost my speed and power, but I believe I've just just started my career, if anything. So, but it was important for me to win this fight tonight and win it well. The way in which you won the fight, you think that's answered a few questions about where you can go now moving forward again with the, the come? If anything else, it's not a comeback, it's a, it's a continuation of my tour of duty. And it's awesome to come back here to where it all started, you know. Uh, it's where I won, uh, first won my uh, first New Zealand title. So it's awesome to come back here at Mystery Creek and having it done down here at Waikato. So it's awesome to be here at Hamilton. Great with the Kiwi crowd, the Samoan crowd. All the emotion of the tsunami, the tragedy. How did that affect you and did it help you, inspire you to uh, come out like the tour man of old? You know, I cried a few tears uh, when my aunt passed away and I received the, the message from back home. But if anything, for me, it's about uh, staying strong for the living. So that's where I was at tonight. You know, I fought for all those who have lost their lives through the, the tragedy back home, and I'm sure something will be done about it in regards to putting some sort of financial backing, you know, uh, in due time to help them. David, where to from here, mate? What happens next? I think I'm going to go to Burger King. <laughs> that's Burger King ain't going to sleep. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, it's great to have you fighting back in New Zealand. What's it like to be back here in front of all the fans here at Mystery Creek tonight? It's awesome, but I, I couldn't have done it without, uh, obviously, the help and the support of uh, the mountain warrior, Shane Cameron. We've got to give it up for him. It's always, it's always great and it's always humbling to come back and fight in front of uh, my home crowd here in New Zealand. It means the world to me. Ladies and gentlemen, David, the Tuamanada Tua! Big right hand, left hand, that's everything. Shane's in more trouble than a tightrope walker in a windstorm right now. And finally, McTavish comes in, Bruce McTavish, and starts the fight. Three real hard blows at the end of it to finish it off. And set up with more. The man was hurt. I hope he's okay. I saw him sitting on the stool across the way. One big right hand. Bam, the left hand. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And finally, Bruce McDavish gets in there. Thirteen unanswered head blows. Heavy, heavy head blows. To me, even, that, that was a bit too long. I thought David look. David knocked him out in the first round. I don't know what happened, what the controversy was after the second knockdown, which he, he was really counted out. But to let him take that much punishment, uh-uh, no, no, not good. Well, it was a brilliant, brilliant finish. Let's go up to Clint Brown. Clint. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from uh, Team Tour. And now we're going to hear from Kenny Rainsfield, who's the manager of Team Cameron. First of all, Kenny, uh, how was Shane? Oh, uh, mate, he's, um, you know, he's obviously uh, pretty well hurt, so we're just going to get him checked out. We're just going to take him back to the room and make sure that he's OK. I know you guys trained the house down for this fight. You wanted this fight, but obviously you didn't want that. Well, firstly, I just want to say congratulations to David Tour. That was an um, absolutely devastating win and, and full credit to Team Tour. So, you know, good on him. And he always has that power and the power's back. And where to from Shane now? Oh, well, obviously, we just make sure that he's physically OK. But maybe, you know, we've got to put up tools back on and, and carry on. You know, it's, um, it's the fight game and I'm sure Shane will get up and he'll fight again. I know you're disappointed. What about from Duco, Dean Lonigan, and everyone that's turned up here at Mystery Creek tonight, the fans? It's absolutely outstanding to see this uh, crowd at a boxing event, and um, I, congratulations to Duco, to the boys from Duco. They did a, a fantastic job, and um, just awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Rainsfield from Team Cameron, and there you have it, the Woodstock fight of the century, and the tour man, the tour manator is back big time. 
David Tua leaving the main arena at the Mystery Peak Event Centre. All I can say is, wow, raw, raw power. And he just dealt some of that to the mountain warrior, Shane Cameron. Stick around, folks. We'll break this one down shortly. Seven seconds into the second round of a 12-round bout, and it's lights out for Shane Cameron. The raw power of David Tua is back, and it's back in a big way. Many people predicted a first-round knockout. Some say it should have happened, but then he got done seven seconds in, Mike Ango. All I can say is stunning, stunning display. Look, it's uh, three years in the lead-up, all wound up, and he just let it go with mean intentions. Referee should be shot. I'm sorry. He let that go far too long. Should have been stopped at the end of the first round. He was way late, seven seconds, coming into that second round. Shane, Shane Cameron took 14 David Tua power shots on the trot. That was just not, not good enough at world-class level. Let's have a look at the first round. The end of the first round, this is where Mike suggests it should have been stopped. There was some confusion. Was bang, bang, bang again. And, you know, the crazy thing here, everybody was talking about David's left. It was his right that did all the damage. That was the end of the first round. And, and they they seem to lose track of time, and you say should we stop right there? Shane Cameron was in no real condition to continue. I mean, what basically did was set him up to take 14 power shots in the second round. Although it does make me right in predicting a second round knockout. Okay, smarty pants. All right, let's go for final thoughts. Brownie, Jeff Fennick, and the Colonel. Brownie. Thanks, guys. Yes, what an amazing quick fight that was. The Tourminator is back. First of all, Colonel Bob, what's your take on that, mate? And, and the confusion there in the ring. Well, uh, the confusion aside for one second. First off, the magnitude of what's happened here is magnificent for the heavyweight division because Tua now with this kind of, I mean, this was a dramatic knockout. This was a tremendous knockout. This is what people want to see in the heavyweight division. They're tired of the Klitschko touch, touch, right hand. They want to see knockout. Knockouts. They get to see a knockout. This was as good as any heavyweight championship fight. If you like to see knockouts, you come to see heavyweight fights. And David did it extraordinarily. There was confusion at the end of the first round. There's a couple of things that could have happened. Number one, he could have stopped the fight. Number two, he could have disqualified David Tua because Jeff Fennick picked it up immediately. I didn't see it because they're actually a little too close to me. On Jeff, his knees. Jeff had the angle. He was on his knees, and he could have been disqualified for hitting him twice while he was down. It, it didn't happen because Shane Cameron would never be able to beat David Tua. So I'm glad in a way that didn't happen. As far as it coming out in the second round with the 12, 14 punches, I think we counted them. It was awesome. It was an awesome display. The referee made up his mind. It might have taken a couple of steps for him to get in there because he's a referee that works back from fighters. He doesn't stay right on top of them because he wants to see if a guy goes down. That might be the reason why three or four more punches has got landed then as Jeff said that was not necessary for him to take that kind of punishment. Now Jeff you said you gave Cameron a chance before the fight but man the tour man that was explosive that was a Saban aftershock wasn't well, it? To be honest that, that's exactly the way that David Tua wanted him to fight him that's what they expected. I expected Shane to, to get up there and, and stop all that block all that punching by being in close. He didn't do it and look um, had I known like, you know, how he was going to fight that kind of fight I might have thought differently. I honestly believe that Shane Cameron would get up there, put his shoulder on him, just slowly work him backwards, push him backwards, work to the body in them. Then I thought it might have been different, but look, David Dew was oh, awesome. Um, punching power, awesome. That guy will knock out Klitschko. Anybody that watch that in America, they're not going to let this guy fight anybody too quick. So, you know, they're, they're going to protect the Klitschko's from fighting David Dew at the moment. Well, Colonel, what, what will this fight do for the continuation of David Tua's career? Uh, wasn't it great to see him back in the ring? Oh, wasn't it? was great to it see him. It was fantastic. Him. I mean, I love to see knockouts in the heavyweight division. One of his best friends is Mike Tyson, and every time Mike fought, he had the same anticipation. I wasn't joking, folks, when I said I had goosebumps before this fight because you get that way. I don't care how many 
many heavyweight title fights I've done, which is probably around 75. This was as exciting as any heavyweight championship fight I've ever done, and it ended up that way. And I got to say before you take me off, Clint, to the guys at Duco, they really deserve great yeah. credit. This young promoter, David Higgins, I love to see new promoters come into boxing because it's great for boxing. They can stage, Duco has shown tonight, and I'm sure the pay-per-view will come in huge, that they can stage a world heavyweight championship fight. I think that Haseem Rotman will come here and David will have a shot to kind of do what he couldn't do the last time when it was a draw. And if he has a dramatic knockout over Haseem Rodman, it's Katie by the door and 210 for him. Uh, Jeff Fittick, you've worked with Mike Tyson. There's a similarity between I and Mike Tyson in his heyday and David the Tourinator there from what we saw again tonight. Uh, you gave Cameron a chance because of the sparring sessions that he had with Tyson. And Tyson's advice to Cameron was get active. And if you're not active, keep training. Wouldn't it be great to see David Tour now stay active? Oh, definitely so. He's got to. Hopefully the people that are looking after him, which I'm sure they will, they'll make him stay active. There's an opportunity for him now to make millions of dollars again. This guy's been there and he's been down. He's ridden that roller coaster. Look, I, I, David Tua is such a gentleman. You see how he spoke after the fight. That's what I love about David Tua. I wish him all the success in the world. I wish he gets what he should have got years ago, and that's the anyway, championship of the world. So be our brothers, they brought it on, and the tour man destroyed Shane the Mountain Warrior. There he is. It was Tour Nation Day, live and exclusive on Sky Box Office. Glad you could be part of history tonight. Good on you, Bob. Good on you, Jeff. Back to you, Stephen. And good on you, David Tour. Thank you, Brownie. A 50th fight victory for David Tua and a 43rd KO. And wasn't that a hell of a KO? Back with more from Mystery Peak in the Tick. We want you to witness the fight of the century. To a camera live on Sky TV. We want you to come through and say, stand up. So won't you fight a better man? Get the man you want to a daring person in the street business. Mystery Creek Event Center. And it's all over. The main event, four years in the making, and it lasted seven seconds into the second round. David Tua, KO number 43, fight win number 50 in his pre professional career. And it really was business as usual. Mike Ango, he looked like the David Tua of old, except I think, you know, shedding all that weight, he looked like he had more power. People suggested he didn't have that power. Man, that was just impressive. That was chilling power. And you saw David's explosive, not just with the left hook. He moved his head well there. He caught him with the left hook. He also throwing an inside uppercut off the left hand as well, which he's always done. And there you saw the overhand right. Again, the overhand right. And that's the punch that people said David Tua didn't have. But boy, did it set up his left hand well. And again, led with the right hand, two right hands, finished with a three that missed, and then the controversial shots on the ground. David Tua, uh, uh, emphatic display. Here it is again. You counted 14. The one thing you said as soon as the fight started, you said, look at Shane's hands. Look at his right hand. It's too low. And you can see right there, the left, but the big, big right. Oh, that's, that's just hard to watch. It's, look, boxing I had, a text, is, I had a text from someone who said, stomach churning. Bruce McTavish should have had it earlier. Should have finished it earlier. Oh, look, I don't think there's any question. Look, boxing is a brutal, brutal sport, and it can find you out in the most devastating of ways. Unfortunately, that was Shane Cameron tonight. Yeah, it was indeed. And it'll, uh, it'll be interesting to see what that means now for Shane Cameron's boxing career. Uh, for David Tour as well, they talk about the possible uh, being a world championship eliminator. But it, people are going to say, well, who was Shane Cameron? I mean, it'll be the way he finished Cameron off that'll get it. the Americans back interested. Well, look, David is a very, very marketable fighter. He's a fighter that the Americans love. He's still got some brand value and some brand credentials over there in a division which is basically, uh, let's say, pretty boring. You know, the clutch clothes, although they're, they're very difficult fighters to beat, they're not exactly excitement machines. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. Trust you've enjoyed it. Coming back shortly to wrap up the big one. Tua, seven seconds into the second round. It's all over for Shane Cameron for the moment. But you know what heavyweights are like? They like to come back. Back in attack. Witness the fight of the century To a camera live on Sky TV We want you to come through and say stand up So won't you fight a better man Get the man you want to a daring person in the street business We want you to witness the fight of the century Stand up, so won't you fight a better man? Get the man you want to a daring person in the street business.
long night comes to a very quick end. The Woodstock fight of the century. David Tua, I reiterate again, is back to his most powerful best. I think, I think many people are still sitting back going, oh my goodness. There were a lot of people suggesting it would end in the first round. Almost did, but the sheer power that he produced in the second round, seven seconds into the second round, with the combination in that big left, leading actually his right. Everybody talked about the left, but it was his right that did all the damage. You can feel it right now. It does hurt to even watch, and Shane Cameron must be feeling very, very sore right now. His welfare is the most important thing right now, but David Tua had a lot of motivation for this fight. He's had a lot of troubles in the past, former management, family in, and thinking about the tragedy that has struck the Pacific Islands and his own native nation of Samoa certainly must have done a lot. I'm sure the strains of the Samoan national anthem before we came out must have really welled him up and welled everybody up. One person that was sitting sideline for the whole shooting match, Tracy <laughs> Donaldson. You've got to go back to work on Monday to the Rock between 10 and 3, but you were there when it happened, when you could feel it going on, that Cameron was gone. Mm -hmm. What was it feel like for you as a fan? Look, I have to tell you, I actually have a, a little secret about David Tua. I have a vested interest in him winning. Uh, David Tua's wife, Rabina, and myself are cousins. So we were keeping it in the family tonight. Very much a family affair. Kenny Rainsfield, excuse me for pointing, apologies there, but Kenny Rainsfield and so we're having just a few problems, probably trying to get inside the Mad Butcher, a big supporter. A big supporter. Big almost Shane almost supporter. an unofficial mascot for New Zealand sport, isn't he? And the word just comes through, Shane Cameron's left the building. Right. Uh, it's simple as that, and I would say that is purely on a medical and physical reason to make sure that the Mountain Warrior is fine. So let's just walk it through again. You got a vested interest, but you were there when it all unfolded. What was, what was your heart racing or what was going? Were you jumping up and down? Well, I actually was in the, in the Shane Cameron corner. Um, by no fault of my own and um, the amazing thing I thought was David Tua when he came out the crowd was nowhere near as big behind him as they were for Shane Cameron the, the applause for Cameron was deafening Tua I mean there was still massive applause it was a lot more mediocre but uh, I heard people boo I heard people I heard boo, booing as well boo Tua Bad now sporting. that for me was great was oh I don't know about oh, that it, was just, it surprised yeah. me with David Tua it surprised me as well I thought the country I mean you've only got to look at the TAB to know that you know he is definitely the favourite to win so it surprised me that more of the crowd here tonight weren't behind him as much, but he's what, got the stuff. What a way to finish off yeah. a big old night here in the Tron. Your chance to be a winner of fun about more Duco events coming up. Just begin to win one of five Samsung LED TVs. Text Duco and your email to 244 to enter. It's 20 cents a pop, one entry per mobile. And when you give your email, you'll be uh, opening yourself up. And I think it's a good way. The way Duco have done this event, they'll be sending you more ideas of what they're up to. Now, the talk, of course, of Hazim Rachman possibly coming down to face tour. That would be pretty exciting indeed. But I think the excitement and the interest this one's generated, uh, it can only go on from here. And yep. I think the people's champion has won out against the great White Hope. Well, and they say the greats never come back. So, I mean, the people that say that really got to eat their words, don't they? Had a good time? Great time. Yeah. Loved it. All right, we are done. We are going to put a lid on this one. Just confirming, seven seconds into the second round, David Tua gets his 50th professional win and his 43rd knockout against Shane the Mountain Warrior Cameron. Brought to you by Woodstock. The Woodstock fight of the century is officially done and dusted. From all the team here at Skybox office that have worked incredibly hard here in Hamilton, we wish you a very good evening and a safe weekend.